Right, this is a wood gas camp stove. Um, the way these work is that they actually gasify the wood by partially burning it at the bottom of the stove, and then the gas is produced burn at the top of the stove. It's very efficient, and two logs like this, broken up, will um, burn in it for maybe 30 to 40 minutes, giving you plenty of time to cook dinner, and the amount of heat coming out will be a lot more than out of, say, a normal hob on your cooker at home. Around the top of the stove is a ring of holes, and you can probably just see at the very base of the stove are some much smaller holes. The small holes let in a tiny amount of air that gasifies the wood, and the larger holes let in the rest of the air that burns the wood gas. The air is drawn in through these holes around the bottom of the stove by a fan that's set in the base of it. Now there's two sockets on the side for low and high speed, and you simply plug the little battery pack into whichever of them. You obviously get more heat if you put it into the high socket. Okay, so you need some bits of wood ready. Here's some that I split up earlier. You want the lengths about right so that they're going to sit nicely in the stove and not protrude above this upper ring of air holes. So we'll pack them in. You need to pack it fairly densely, um, but do leave some gaps for the, the air to flow around the bits of wood that you've put in there. So you can see there we've filled it up, um, but none of the wood's really protruding above the holes. Okay, so I've prepared a little pile of kindling. This is just by using a knife to peel bits off the pieces of wood before I put them in there. Um, I'm going to use this to light the stove. The manufacturer actually recommends using some kind of lighting fluid, but I, I kind of think that's cheating. So we're going to do it with bits of wood. Now you need to have the battery pack ready, because as soon as we've got it lit, we're going to plug this in, and that's going to help the fire get going. Right, so I've piled a bit of kindling in the top, and uh, uh, this is the tricky bit. I'm actually lighting a fire from the top instead of from the bottom. I found a neat way to do it is to get a little spill of wood going like that and then just hold it inside and let it catch a few of the other bits that I've placed in there. Okay, so that's starting all right. Let's get a few more bits of kindling on the top. Right, I'm going to plug the fan in on low power now. That's actually going pretty well. You can see the little jets of gas burning there now. So I'm going to plug in the high power socket now. This is the moment of truth. Did I use enough kindling to light the other pieces of wood? You can keep adding a few more bits at this stage to keep it going while it starts up. So that's pretty much going now. That isn't going to go out. It'll slowly pick up heat now. And um, 
before we start cooking, there's a, a little pot stand that just comes in two pieces like this. That slots together. We drop that in. Okay, so now we've got the pot on the top. And if we look underneath, we can see there's a nice uh, ring of flames burning right underneath it. Just a small air gap to let the uh, let the exhaust come out and heat the pot. Now it's been burning for a minute, we'll just have a, a quick look inside. Yep, it's going nicely now. There's uh, the wood gasifying down at the bottom and the flames burning as that gas approaches up to the top of the stove. Now this has been on for just a few minutes now and already it's beginning to bubble and to steam. So at this stage you can switch the power socket over from high to low. That's going to reduce the heat slightly and it'll make the wood last a little bit longer as well. Okay, cooking's finished now. And you can see there's just a little bit of ash left in the bottom. There's still some heat coming out there at the moment though.